Hey guys, welcome back. I've got a lawn tractor in the shop here. As you can hear it, it's just clicking. And that noise is coming from right inside the hood here. So what I'm going to do here is show you what's causing this and how to diagnose it properly without replacing parts that you don't need to replace. And I'm gonna help you determine whether it's the battery, the starter, or the solenoid that's causing this noise. Okay, let's pop the hood here. So this machine's got quite a bit of miles on it. And let's turn the key again. So definitely the noise is coming from the solenoid. Now, sometimes you may get a click like that. It could be because the battery is dead or weak. So in this case here, I've already charged the battery. I've tested it. The battery's good. Sometimes the solenoid might click like that because it's a bad starter. So what I want to show you today is how to quickly determine whether this clicking noise that's going on right now is because of the solenoid or the starter. So the next tool I'm going to take out is an old screwdriver that I don't really care about. Now the reason why I've got an old screwdriver here that I don't care about is because I will use the screwdriver to connect these two posts here together. Now before I go ahead and do that I want to tell you guys why when you connect a piece of metal from here to there is you're joining these two positive cables together. So when you do what I'm about to do is you're bypassing the switch. So by connecting these together with the screwdriver, I'm bypassing the solenoid, bringing power straight to the starter, and that will let me know if the starter's bad or if it's the solenoid. So again, we're getting just clicks here. And I'm going to connect these two cables together or the two posts here to determine if it's a bad starter or a bad solenoid. So if the engine doesn't turn over, it's a bad starter. If the engine turns over when I connect the screwdriver, it's a bad solenoid. And here we go. So that's a quick diagnosis right here, guys. So I will recommend that when you bypass the solenoid like I just did, that you keep the key switch off. Don't leave it on like I did because you don't really want the engine to start when you're testing to see if the starter works. So now I definitely know it's the solenoid and not the battery or the starter. So I'm going to show you how to replace a solenoid. It's very easy. So before I replace a solenoid, what I like to do is disconnect the battery. And I'm just going to disconnect the, the uh, negative cable from the battery today. So now I'm going to remove both wires from the solenoid here. I'm going to use a 7 16 socket. Now there's two small bolts here that are holding the solenoid on the body of the tractor. They're 8 millimeter heads. Now all that's left are the two small wires on the tabs. I like to keep track of where which wire went where. So the purple one here was on the right hand side and the black one on the left. So I will just disconnect these. And here's the old solenoid. It's probably the original one from the machine. Now something I forgot to mention earlier is another symptom of a bad solenoid is that it won't make any noise at all. It won't even click. It just so happened that on this machine here it was clicking, but oftentimes they're defective and they don't click. Now this is a John Deere LA125, so if you do get a solenoid, you want to get the one with two tabs for the small wires. And you can get a universal one as well. And I've got a solenoid here with two mounting brackets. It's a universal one with the two tabs. And now it's going to fit in there perfectly. And now make sure both bolts are nice and tight. And now connect the two wires exactly in the same position they were. So these are nice and secure. Now I've got to put the two cables on the solenoid. And some of these solenoids come with little copper washers. I usually put them after the connector. Okay, now it's going to require a half inch socket. And last but not least, make sure to reconnect your battery. 
and make sure that your battery terminals are nice and clean because it could also cause a no start and a clicking noise. Okay, now let's try this machine and hopefully everything's going to work. So let's put the choke on. So there you go guys, it was that easy. Anybody watching today can do this themselves. Trust me, it's not that hard to do. If you don't feel comfortable, take it to an honest shop because I've seen some shops where they ended up replacing starters or what they did is they charged for replacing a starter when they didn't, replaced the battery when they didn't really have to and charged them for all three items in some cases I've seen in some shops. So just be careful guys where you take your stuff because these are symptoms and problems that can be blamed on multiple items on the machine. So a lot of people would have thought, well, that's the starter that's bad, it's the battery that's bad. And they would have went ahead and bought these, these parts and put them in or paid for them at a shop when they didn't need them. So sometimes I get a lot of customers, they come in the shop, they've put a new starter on their tractor, when in reality it was just the solenoid like you saw today. Also, if you're wondering how am I able to start the tractor without sitting on it, Well, that's because I've got the parking brake on. If you put the parking brake on your tractor, you can get off the machine, it will keep running, or you can start it that way without sitting on the seat. Now, there's a whole bunch of reasons why your tractor may not start, especially after it's been sitting for the winter. So I put out a video not that long ago. It's the top five reasons why your lawn tractor won't start after winter storage. And I've put the link under the video. So again, guys, if your machine won't start, check what I showed you today. It's a quick and easy way to bypass the whole switch system and bypass the solenoid itself because all you're doing is basically connecting these two positive wires. Once they're connected together, they form one wire that goes to the starter, which is the positive wire. And therefore you can quickly know if it's the solenoid or the starter like I showed you in the video. If you liked the video, please comment and share it with your friends and make sure to subscribe. Have a great day.